Okay, let's have a look at Honor in King Henry IV, Part 1. Honor's arguably the most central theme of the play. All the main characters, in some way or another, are concerned with Honor. And yet, each of these characters have has a vastly different view of what Honor is and what constitutes Honor. The multitude of ideas that are presented about Honor in this play make it a difficult concept to pin down. And so... Honour is something that as we read through this text, we really need to think deeply and critically about and come up with an interpretation. What do we think is being said about honour in this play? What is Shakespeare's point? What is he trying to say about honour here? It's not an easy thing to get our head around as much as, uh, I guess, part of the problem is so much is said about honour in here that it makes it difficult to sort of come to a real definitive answer about what Shakespeare is saying about honour. But we want to come up with some ideas and some interpretation of honour. Let's have a look at some of these different views of honour that are shown here. Let's start with King Henry IV. For him, honour is chiefly about looking after his kingdom. It's about the legitimacy of rulership, and it's about the well-being of his people. That's what honour means to him. He's concerned because there is a sense that his ascension to the throne was dishonourable. He himself was once a rebel. He overthrew Richard II, and so he's not really that comfortable... Uh, with his position at the moment and he's trying to be become as secure as possible. He initially views Hotspur as honourable while he sees Hal to be stained with dishonour. In this, in this way, uh, we can see that King also thinks that honour is about being victorious in battle and having those sort of great qualities that, is, that a good soldier has and those heroics on the battlefield. They're the sorts of things that the King also sees as being qualities of honour. Let's think about King Henry in dishonour. Essentially, the catalyst for the rebellion is the notion that King Henry has acted dishonourably. The Percy clan feel like he has gone against his word. Initially, he said he didn't want to be king, and yet he went against that word um, and sort of then became king. And so the Percys think that he hasn't acted all that honourably, and that's what causes this rebellion to happen. They feel like he went back on his word. They also feel that his treatment of them has been unfair. They helped him to get this position of being king, and yet he hasn't treated them uh, fairly in, in accordance with that. That's what they feel. So again, they feel he's acting dishonorably in that way. Hotspur feels like his uncle and his father have lost honor in helping to get King Henry the throne, that they did a lot of the dirty work, um, and King Henry's reaping the reward for that, and yet his father and his uncle have lost honour. So they think if they overthrow him, they can get some of their honour back. Hotspur also feels that the king's treatment of Mortimer is dishonourable. So the king has a, a large role to play um, in this rebellion because these guys who are rebelling against him feel like he has acted dishonourably. Hotspur, well, Hotspur feels that chiefly honour has to do with glory on the battlefield. The more you beat someone, the more, um, you know, the more victories you have in battle, the greater the opponents that you defeat. These are all the things that bring honour. He also views honour as defending one's reputation and good name against any perceived insult. And we don't just mean, uh, when we say insult, bad words or, or calling somebody names. We mean when somebody does something to you that's, um, that's not right that they don't treat you in a way that you should be treated. That's taken as an insult against you. And so he wants to defend himself against those sorts of things. He feels the king has insulted the Percy clan in the way he's treated them. For Hotspur, the pursuit of honour is the highest aim in life. This is the thing that he values the most. He thinks life is all about gaining honour. He views honour as something that he's fought for and won, and it's generally won by defeating other people. His single-mindedness for honour, in a sense, and his narrow view of honour can be seen as a little bit of a flaw in his character. Falstaff, while he claims to want nothing to do with honour, he believes that, that honour is nothing but a word, it's nothing but hot air, and, and it's wasted effort trying to get honour. It doesn't do anybody any good. In stark contrast to Hotspur, who thinks that uh, honour is the greatest thing, um, Falstaff desires life over honour. Hotspur would rather have honour even than he, more than his life. Falstaff thinks that life is far better than honour. And he says, you know what, you can have your honour, just let me live. So his actions throughout the play can be seen as dishonourable as well. And they culminate in this very poor behaviour that he has at, at Shrewsbury, um, where he, you know, treats the soldiers that he's enlisted very poorly, um, you know, takes their money off them after they die, 
you know, chooses people that he knows aren't going to be very successful. These are quite dishonourable things. He then pretends to die uh, in battle so that um, he won't be actually killed. Can be seen as quite a dishonourable thing. But again, we see his um, his desire for life rather than honour. And then the way he treats Hotspur's body by sort of stabbing it and trying to claim it as his own killing can also be seen as a dishonourable act. Prince Harry, well, for how honour seems to be associated with noble behaviour. Initially, he sacrifices the appearance of honour to achieve his goal. He has this goal about trying to become uh, one of the common people, to be able to relate to them, to, to have them love him as one of their own. That's his plan. And so he thinks he'll sacrifice the appearance of honour for a time. And he believes that when he's ready, at a, at a time of his own choosing, he can gain honour once again. Like Hotspur, he believes that honour can be won by defeating other people, and he vows to trade uh, his bad reputation for Hotspur's glory by defeating him. His actions at Shrewsbury are shown to be an honourable person. He's not proud or conceited, and Hotspur can be seen as sort of proud and conceited. Well, Hal at Shrewsbury doesn't act this way. He offers to engage in symbol, single combat with Hotspur in order to preserve the lives of other people. Quite an honourable thing to do. He's generous towards Falstaff by allowing him to claim uh, the killing of Hotspur, which is you know a, a remarkable thing for him to do. He praises Hotspur even after he, after Hotspur dies. Uh, no one is around to hear it. The way he speaks about Hotspur after his death and acknowledging how great he was uh, is quite an honourable thing. And of course he also acknowledges Douglas and Douglas' bravery and the way he fought and ends up releasing him. So by the end, Hal seems to be acting quite honourably. So in the mouths of various characters, the definition of honour ranges from being synonymous with an individual's courage on the battlefield to a mere word that gets used in an attempt to elevate the physical horrors of warfare uh, and, and battle to something that's a little bit more lofty. So war is seen as this ho hideous, horrible thing, um, but if we can attribute honour to it, that raises that the goriness of war into something much more glorious. So what interpretations can we make regarding honour in this text? Well, the different views of honour presented could say more about the characters than themselves than they do about the true nature of honour. Perhaps the thoughts that each character has about honour actually speaks more about their own personalities, their own characters, than it does suggest things about honour. Falstaff and Hotspur present two extreme ends of honour, while Hal gives a truer, more complete picture. This is something that you might believe to be true, that Falstaff is at one end of the spectrum, he thinks honour is, is useless and a waste of time. Hotspur is at the other end of the spectrum, he thinks honour is the be-all and end-all and it all comes through defeating people in battle. And Hal fits somewhere in the middle here and gives a more truer, more complete picture of what honour is. Perhaps honour is closely connected with ideas about power and rulership. Maybe that's an idea that is presented throughout this text, that, that honour and power go together, that to be a good ruler, there needs to be a sense of honour that, that's had with that. And perhaps there is no true or clear indication of honour, that, that honour is merely constructed by individuals and it's constructed to serve their own needs. So whatever is going to help them the most, that's what they attribute to honour. So for Hotspur, for him, honour was all about uh, gaining victories in battle. He was good at that and so he attributed honour to that and that's how in his eyes, in the eyes of some other people, he was the most honourable person. So perhaps there is no clear definition of honour, it's more merely constructed by different individuals. What questions can we ask about honour? Well, here's some questions you might want to answer. Why does the play present so many conflicting ideas about honour? Does Henry IV Part 1 ever settle on one particular concept? Why or why not? What kind of evidence would you use to support your answer? Make sure whenever you're discussing things or giving your opinion on things from the text that you're justifying it with some evidence from the text. Question number two, what does King Henry mean when he says Hotspur is the theme of honour's tongue? Why does he think his son Prince Hal is dishonourable? And the third question you might want to ask is, how does Falstaff define honour? How are his ideas different from that of other characters in the play? If you're looking to do some essay topics around here, here's a couple of essay topics that you might come across um, that have to do with honour. Henry IV Part 1 suggests that honour is a noble and necessary attribute for all successful leaders and monarchs. You could discuss that. In Shakespeare's play, honour is revealed to be a thin concept that some men use in a fruitless attempt to elevate the gruesome realities of warfare to something noble. In what ways do you agree or disagree on that? So there's some thoughts about, about honour 
and about how honour is presented in the text. A lot to get your head around, a lot to think about, but it's an important one to come up with an understanding and interpretation of.